What's up, everybody? This is Steve Celestio here. We are back with another exciting episode of Eagles on the Air, the Salesian High School podcast brought to you straight from our broadcast studio. I have an excellent guest with us today. I'm excited to get into it with him. My guest is the newly appointed, at the time of filming, newly appointed Salesian High School Facilities Director and Class of 1986, Mr. Steve Messias. Steve, welcome on to Eagles on the Air. Thanks for having me. This is great. Oh, I'm excited to have you because I got some good stuff to talk about. I know we spoke before the show about what to hit on, so I'm excited to get into a bunch of this stuff. Hopefully everybody at home has been enjoying our podcasts, so we're excited to bring you another great episode. I start off everybody with the same question. What is your Salesian story? So if you don't mind, let's hear your journey. How did you come to pick Salesian High School as a school in, uh, I guess, 1982? And what has your journey been like? Yeah, so this might be a long time. Uh, I've been here uh, actually on campus since about 1977 when my brother... Carlos was looking at schools, and uh, it, it's such a beautiful campus. And uh, as a young kid, four years younger than my brother, um, you walk onto the campus and you see everything that that the school has to offer. Especially even back then when it, we didn't have the new gym and everything like that. But you know, you had your own baseball field, you had your, a gym. It didn't look like a high school. It looked more like a college campus as a young kid. And uh, I fell in love with the school, and I always said, and I always, my brother used to come home with the yearbooks every year, and there'd be things like uh, the baseball team won the city championship, or I think they called it the th uh, throughway championship at those times, and I always wanted to be one of those guys. I wanted, to, and I wanted to uh, be a big fish in a small pond, and uh, I chose Solution because it was it was the right fit for me, and uh, I'm thank God every day I did. That's awesome. All right. So you selected Salesian. You followed in your brother's footsteps. Uh, take me through, your, take me through your, your years as a student. So here from 80, uh, 82 to 86, uh, as a freshman, you come in and you, uh, you're nervous. Uh, I didn't take, I, we took public transportation to get in. We took the seven bus from Yonkers uh, with some characters on that bus. We had some good times with Tony Terrazano and, and guys like that. And, uh, we, we got into classes and we started meeting with each other and we ended up uh, hanging out with the, uh, you know, guys like Anthony Ragone, who we affectionately call Captain Love Boat because he wore a white suit on his first day of school. Uh, <laughs> it was good stuff. Uh, and we, we had a cast of characters in 86. So uh, for us, we're considered the, the forgotten class. Uh, we are the only class in Salesian history that does not have a yearbook. I actually, from doing some work years ago with the alumni, the 1986 class is famous for not having a yearbook. Yes. And I've had people rummaging through my office way mm -hmm. back when looking for this 1986 yearbook. Correct. I said, you can look all you want. And I think way back when, uh, I know that the class in 1985, Father Tom Provenzano, uh, may he rest in peace, good yes. friend of mine used to work here, yes. came back to work here as well, was the yearbook moderator. Correct. And he said he was... He said he was the last great yearbook moderator Salesian had. I don't know. 1985, a beautiful book. 86, unfortunately, didn't get one. Correct. Sounds like you still had some memorable times. Plenty of people have come through these doors right. and talked about those mid-80 years as the guys were active, they were fun, and it sounds like just that. Yeah, a lot of stories. I don't know if we can tell them on this podcast. But... <laughs> so real quick, uh, all right, so what elementary school did you graduate from? So I was fortunate enough to go to St. Barnabas Elementary School in the Bronx, uh, where I, I was there for eight years. Uh, the fortunate and, I guess, unfortunate piece of being at St. Barnabas was the fact that my mother was a sixth grade teacher there. So uh, my mother had the uh, uh, fortune of, guess, of teaching her daughter, her oldest son, and her youngest son. And she also had the privilege of uh, teaching my my oldest son as well. So so it was good good times at St. Barnabas. I think I was, we were like the only really, maybe a couple other people went to Solution. Um, it was like a foreign land going, coming to from the Bronx to in Yonkers to New Rochelle. And because uh, a lot of guys went to Mount St. Michael or they went over to Spelman um, and, and some went to Fordham as well. But um, we, were, we were the guys who we decided to get on buses and go, come up to New Rochelle, and it was great. Well, after what I feel like is going to be a great show today, I'm thrilled that you 
decided to choose Salishan. Yes. I, I, I am because I, now, for 40 years later, we have plenty to talk about today. Oh, absolutely. So this is going to be great. Uh, I, and first of all, big, sh you know, I want to thank, you know, uh, Steve's mom always as the eighth grade teacher at St. Barnabas always invited me as the admissions director in to talk to the kids at Barnabas. So that, that that's always been great. Uh, OK, so you graduate in 1986. Uh, where were you off to? After solution, I went up to the, uh, uh, the State University of New York at Cortland. I uh, went to Cortland State for four years. Uh, I studied physical education up there. Uh, it was a great time, a uh, beautiful, beautiful place to be, um, had great experiences in the classroom and, uh, you know, outside the classroom, played baseball for two years in Cortland. Uh, it was a great experience. And uh, after I graduated, I came home and it was, it was really, uh, really a different setting, you know, going from the farmlands of uh, Cortland, New York to back to Yonkers. It was uh, a little different, but uh, it was awesome. And then right after college, this is when Don Bosco called me again, um, and it's a real, you know, real funny story. Uh, I had a, a job opportunity to teach at Corpus Christi School in uh, Portchester, uh, which is another Salesian Grammar School. And uh, I'll never forget this. I was walking in a, I was trying to make a decision on what I wanted to do. I had this job offer with, with Corpus Christi, or if I wanted to go into the public school se sector, and uh, I'm in a. I'm in the Basilica in, in uh, Mexico City uh, with my family uh, during the summer, and I'm thinking to myself, I don't, really don't know what to do. And as I turn the corner, there's a big statue of Don Bosco. And I said, well, I guess I know what I got to do now. <laughs> uh, so I took the job for, uh, to, to teach phys ed at Corpus Christi School, which was a great experience, my first job out of, out of college. Uh, and I was there for uh, six years. And uh, while I was there, I also coached here from 90 to 94 as an assistant coach under John Perrone. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so we're up to 1994. I started off the show by saying that you are our newly appointed director of facilities, mm -hmm. but you did have a full-time job here, multiple jobs. Uh, tell me about your, your coming to us full-time for the first time. I had taken a job. I was also the head coach at Lehman College from 94 through 96, and I was doing that as part-time and teaching up in Portchester, and I'd have to leave class early uh, to go to games. You know, college baseball games start, you know, at, you know, three or four o'clock in the afternoon, and you got BP and all that, all that stuff you have to do prior. So I used to have to hire my own uh, person to come in and take over my class. And, uh, and so it, um, so what I decided, I went to the Lehman AD and asked them, hey, is there anything on campus that I can do, you know, to, uh, so I can be here full time? And he said, no, you, no, we don't have anything. So I called John Flaherty, who was the principal at Salish at the time, and I said, John, do you have any like part-time phys ed jobs that I can, I can do? Because uh, I would like to, you know, come in in the morning and then coach in the afternoon. And John said, no, I don't have any part-time jobs, but I do have a full-time AD's job a full-time teaching job, and you could coach baseball here. So I said, can I get back to you on that? And he said, yeah, sure. So I went back to Lehman because I really wanted to get into the college coaching scene. And uh, being a young guy, too, you know, we had won two championships down at Lehman at my time there. And uh, I went to my AD again. I said, hey, do you, do you have anything? He said, nah, you should stick to teaching. I said, well, then I'm resigning. And uh, I went, I came right to Solutions. So, and I stayed here from 96 to 2004. That's great. Wow. I actually, I, I've known you a long time and I did not know, this is the first time I'm hearing that you were the head coach at Lehman College. Yes. I, I, I had no idea. And you brought up one person's name. I don't think we say it enough on this podcast. John Flaherty, Salesian High School's retired principal, uh, is an absolute Salesian High School legend. Legend. Legend, not just at Salesian, but in the world of Catholic education uh, in general. One of the best people in the business, past and present. John, I know you're watching these shows. I know you text me or email me after the shows to say how much you enjoy it. Just want to let you know personally, you are a legend. We have all the love in the world for you. And I hope the weather is great down south. Uh, John, by the way, I still have your uh, biology book that I had to uh, 
write my notes in with all the different pictures. It's still at my mother's house. So uh, <laughs> just know that you know, it was a lasting impact on my life. I still have it. Yeah, I think uh, John left a lasting impact on on countless Salesian students and, and staff members' lives. Absolutely. So, uh, absolutely legend, absolute legend. Glad we were able to uh, bring him up over here. Okay, so you're hired as the AD and the baseball coach here at Salesian High School. I know my uh, the previous guest uh, on our podcast, Steve Bruno, uh, was a player of yours. Uh, you guys won a championship together. Uh, I don't want to say any more. I want to hear from you. Uh, you know, the AD job is great, but from a baseball lover like myself, I want to hear a little bit more about your role as the baseball coach, some of the successes you had. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the AD piece of it because there were a lot more than just baseball here that were very good. You know, you had your basketball teams that won state and uh, uh, federation championships here, uh, great programs with Jerry Power. Uh, and then we had bowling that was incredible teams here that under Tom Callahan did a great job. And also the volleyball teams that I believe a couple of years in a row, they were undefeated under Callahan as well. Uh, wrestling, we had some great wrestlers, John Kitson uh, and Jeff Aldana and those types of guys who were, uh, did a really good job. Lou, Lou Villanueva, those, you know, you, you think about uh, wrestling. Uh, here at uh, Solution, these guys pop into my head. These are great guys. Um, tennis under Artie Schoner. I mean, they, they every seemed like every year there was some one of the teams was doing something spectacular and winning championships. And baseball, we we just had to keep pace with everybody. You know, it's it was a lot of fun. We had some great players from you know all over the place. Uh, we had Pelham Bay Little League, and uh, you know all the little leagues that, in the Bronx that that produced these great players and. They were coming through our door, and we were, I was, I was very lucky to have the players. It's not I don't win championships; it's the guys in the field to do it. And they, they were just they bought into what we would what we wanted to do, and uh, and and we were successful. You know, that's an interesting perspective because I say that all the time. Parents, especially, expect the coach to do all this, and, and we could, as a, as the coach of a little league team and a travel team myself, we could steer the ship. But it's really the players, in this case, the students, mm -hmm. that have to be willing to put in the work, the, the time, the dedication. It's not easy to go to school all day, run to the locker room to change, run down to the field for a practice or a game, run back up to get changed later, get home 6, 7 o'clock at night. At that point, start to work and start to do your homework. It's, it's, it's difficult. Right. And so you need those guys. And I, and I always say that as it starts with the players, as the coach, all I could do is steer the ship. So you bring a, a unique perspective uh, back to Salesian High School. Um, you accepted a position here years ago. You accepted a position elsewhere years ago. Can you tell me uh, what forced you to, what, what, what enticed you to leave here uh, some years back? To be honest with you, I don't know why I left, uh, to be honest with you. I always felt that uh, Solution was the best job I've ever had. Uh, the people, uh, my, my friends that I had as, as staff members, the kids I coached, uh, who I still talk to today, and even some of the former teachers that we had, we had a really good uh, rapport here at, at uh, Solution, and it was great. Um, I guess I was just trying to see what else was out there. And so I spent uh, two years in, in Putnam County uh, teaching at Haldane. I was the AD and, and uh, uh, phys ed teacher at Haldane in, in uh, Putnam County. And then I left there after two years and went to the College of Mount St. Vincent for another five years and then City College for the last 12. So in all those places, I've, I've met some really great people and, and had some great uh, players and had the opportunity to uh, do some really cool stuff. And probably, if I may say, probably picked up even more great experiences that you are bringing back to Salesian High School in, your, in your second go-round. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and something unique happened in those years that you were gone. You went from an alum to the father of an alum. So let's, uh, I know your son Connor graduated Salesian High School in 2015. So just real quick, uh, walk me through Connor selecting Salesian as a school and, and and you being the dad of a Salesian student, eventually a Salesian graduate. Like, what was that experience like? That was uh, pretty cool, uh, to be honest with you. Um, we did the tours of all the different schools when he was in, high, in elementary school. And uh, when it came down to brass tacks, 
Solution lives its mission. Uh, everybody else talks a good game, but Solution delivers. And, and that's what it was. We never put any pressure on them. I never said you had to go there. Um, I knew that I had, you know, that people knew who I was, and I didn't want him to feel uncomfortable. I wanted him to make his own way uh, in high school, and he did. He, he was, he's a phenomenal. He has more, he has different skills than I do. Uh, he is a phenomenal musician. He's a very intelligent kid. He definitely gets it from his mom. He wanted to set his own path, and he decided to come to Solution, which is, which is pretty cool. And when I was teaching here all those years, the coolest thing that, was, that I really enjoyed was watching former alum present their diplomas to their kids. And I said, man, hopefully one day I'll have that opportunity. And I did, and it was probably the greatest experience in my life. In being at a ton of graduation so far, that when we have the student graduating whose dad also graduated, that moment handing him his diploma yeah. is always something special. I'm always, you know, they make the administrator sit on the stage at graduation. I always get the chills when I see it. Uh, that's pretty cool. But I'm glad that you mentioned something too. Connor had to like the place. You know, he had to like it for himself. And I, right now, we have uh, two young men. Uh, we have uh, Tommy coming to us from St. Teresa this school year, and we have Joshua coming to us from St. Helena's. Both of their dads graduated from Salesian. Now, I spoke to Josh, I spoke to Tommy, mm -hmm. and I said, it's great that dad came here, you know, and it's great that dad had a great experience here. And we have countless kids whose brothers came here, mm -hmm. and I talked to them in particular, and I said, I want you to come here. Don't get me wrong. I said, but please take the tour. Come to the open house. Do a shadow day. Make sure that you love Salesian High School. You're not coming here because dad came here. Right. Well, you're not coming here because your older brother came here. You're coming here because you checked it out and because you love it. Because we want everyone to have their own unique, special experience here. So I'm glad that you mentioned that Connor had to check it out. Connor loved it. Mm -hmm. uh, I know he has a passion for music mm -hmm. and participated in the band here. Yes and uh continues to continues to play yes he does and uh he's uh and he still has his friends from high school that he still hangs out with and he's been in wedding parties and stuff like that with all these all of his friends and it's great to see that that brotherhood is continuing uh for him because i think it's important i think that's what solution does to you it it, it really does Again, we're talking about a student. We mentioned it on the previous podcast that those bonds of brotherhood are no tighter than when you participate in something outside of school. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know you had an athletic background. Connor has a fine arts background, mm -hmm. which, is, uh, which is great. And we encourage every kid that walks through our doors participate in something after school. Salesian High School runs a great event. Uh, it's in the middle of September called Activity Day, where every sport, every club has a, chance, has a chance to show itself off so that our students can join something that they might not even have known we had. So it's, uh, we, we encourage it, we love it, and we want to see those bonds of brotherhood built. Countless kids come on, countless guests come on and talk about this brotherhood. So let's Let's build that. Let's put this great opportunity in front of these boys and let them take advantage of it. So you are now in the role of our facilities director. Okay, Salesian High School's long-term, uh, long-time facilities director, um, Mr. Chris Beal, uh, accepted a job out in uh, Wisconsin. Uh, Chris is a great friend of mine and want to uh, give him a special shout out here too. Um, sad to see him go, of course, because he's a very good friend of mine and uh, excited, but excited that you're here. So real quick, uh, this is what I'm interested. I didn't tell you I was gonna ask you this question. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> what's changed about this building since your, what's changed about this building or this campus since you were last here? There's a lot, it is, <laughs> it's, it's amazing what's happening. It, just the space that we're sitting in right now was once I believe either a guidance office, or I think it was a guidance office at one point, or maybe a small classroom, but to have a TV studio on, on campus, to have uh, you know, a, a finance, a finance class that has an actual ticker going across that's live uh, is amazing. Uh, the new gym, obviously, I believe it's like 10 years old right now, but it's beautiful. We didn't have that. Um, the field, the baseball field in the back is kept up and it's beautiful. When I was here, it was, it was a little raggedy, but you know, we played on it. It was good. But 
everything is so so amazing where where the uh, brothers and priests used to live now is uh, a uh, biology lab and chem lab the coolest thing i saw was the old uh, uh, kitchen downstairs where the where the brothers and priests used to eat is a full-fledged store uh, it's amazing the gear the, the gear that's in there is crazy uh, all uh, Under Armour stuff, and uh, it's amazing. I, I want to steal every piece. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome stuff. So um, everything has changed. They're, they're, you'll still see the old. You know, I, I know where I got my tooth knocked out in a, uh, against a window over here on the third floor. I, I know where that is, but the classrooms are all totally different. It's it's amazing. So And I want to give a lot of that credit to our current uh, our current president, Father Jim User, who had a vision for this building to, as he says, offer a great 21st century education. Mm -hmm. So like you said, the finance, of, uh, the finance classroom with the livestock ticker, the, uh, the learning commons that we built yeah. with individual study corrals for the students. They're able to use it before and after school, during Even lunch. the cafeteria is totally transformed. See, the Cass and Commons. Cass and Commons became a, became a space that not only are the kids eating lunch there every day, but we host meetings in there. We have special events in there. Uh, we even rent it out. People have parties in there. Yeah. So it became a beautiful space. And the coolest thing that's coming up this year is the fact that you're going to be able to use your ID card to access the building. Uh, any of the buildings uh, on campus, you're going to be able to use your ID ID, and, and you get into the building that way. I guess no no more keys anymore. It's a, it's a thing of the past. Times are changing. Yeah, that's Times awesome. Times are changing. 21st century. Here we go. Absolutely. And uh, you did mention our new gym. I've spoken to guys that have graduated here in the 60s, in the 70s, and they'd come back and said, it's about time you guys put in a new gym. That gym we had was old when I was here, and I graduated 50 years ago. So the, the gym built in 2012, the construction was completed in 2012, uh, has been the highlight of the campus, in my opinion. And we just did a, a couple years ago beautiful addition to that uh, by building the Salesian High School Wellness Center. So it's awesome to see. Um, at time of filming right now, we're at the end of August, mm -hmm. um, but... Uh, so there's no students on campus just yet. Once they are, you're going to see Mr. Palercio's got that room opened until 5 o'clock at night. Kids are working out in there. So, you know, it's kind of, as they say, it's moving forward through wellness. So giving these kids an opportunity to work on themselves, uh, use it during their phys ed classes, absolutely top-notch place. Uh, and I encourage all the eighth graders out there, all these rising eighth graders, come to school, come visit, come check all this stuff out. Uh, it's beautiful. It's 21st century. It's cutting edge. And we want to show it off. We want to offer it to each of you. I'll finish here today with uh, your involvement in a special program we have here. Um, it's a special program that was started a couple of years ago. But you are heavily involved in the Salesian High School Alumni Association. So I'm going to ask you real quick to maybe appeal to some alums and, and, and maybe just tell us a little bit about the Alumni Association, how, how guys can come back, uh, what, it, what the Alumni Association does, what they will do, how guys can become a part of it. Yeah, that's the big thing for us. Uh, we, we had a discussion, I believe, last year at the uh, golf outing. We were standing in the parking lot after everything was over, and we were trying to figure out ways to get uh, our alumni back. And uh, the thing that came up was starting an alumni association. And so over the last year, we've been really uh, meeting with uh, guys like Sal Torrey and Steve Bruno, and we, we had all these conversations about how can we get people back. And I believe that golf outing, uh, we discussed about doing that event, uh, an event at Modern. And we were kind of nervous about it because we had guaranteed we would have at least 75 people, you know, and we weren't sure if we were going to get 75 people on a Monday night in December to come to Modern. We ended up getting 90, and everything ranges from the 60s to 2023, they were there. And even some of the former teachers came back, which was phenomenal. If you are interested in, in helping out with the Alumni Association, we'd love to have you help, but we also want you just to come back. Uh, the school is in a great, great place right now. Uh, it looks fantastic. It does the same. It serves the same uh, demographics of kids. We really that that most of us are, you know, uh, working class guys who uh, come from working class families, 
And uh, we think that we need to come back and just meet, get back to each other again and, and hang out. And uh, the stories, I mean, the stories alone uh, are, are awesome. And, uh, you know, we want to try to help the school a little bit, but mostly it's to get people back together and, and, and have a good time. Yeah, I love it. I love when I love when guys pop into the school. Mm -hmm. Okay, during the school year, they just pop in. You know that we're on Main Street right here in New Rochelle. There's car dealerships up and down the block. Yes. And I love when guys say, "Oh, I was dropping my car off at Honda for an oil change. Just wanted to pop in and say hello to a yeah. few people." Out come the yearbooks. Out come all these stories of their times here. And, and that's really what it's all about. Just staying close to us, staying connected, knowing that our doors are always open. There's always somebody here. Th those are those bonds of brotherhood built with the staff, built with your classmates. Uh, right now we have 13 or 14 alumni on staff. Yes. You know, that's uh, we're not asking the guys in the Alumni Association to get a job teaching here. We're not asking you for, for a million bucks, although if you have it, we would love to get it. Uh, but... Uh, we're asking you, just come back and be a part of the life of Salesian High School. Become a part of the life of these students. Right. They're great kids. They deserve it. And we're offering a top-notch, affordable education to all these kids from the Bronx and Westchester. Uh, and it's the help of the Alumni Association that's going to continue to help this school thrive. If you haven't figured it out yet, I mean, uh, uh, the enrollment is up in school. Uh, the vibe around here is great. We can't wait. At the time of filming, again, we can't wait for our students to come back into the building. Um, they're like, I, like I always say, they are the life of the building. Um, and so we, we can't wait for the st school year to start. And Steve, we can't wait for you to start, restart the engine as your role, in your role as the facilities director here. And uh, we wish you nothing but the best of luck in your new job. And, and hopefully it's many uh, fruitful years to come. And I would like to say one thing, because I don't know if this guy gets enough credit, but Steve Salustio deserves a hell of a lot of credit of trying to get kids back, trying to get people to come to school here. He, I, I don't know if you've noticed this, but he's very infectious and has a high energy, and I love that about him. And uh, I wish you the best of luck this year bringing the next group of kids. Thank you. Thank you very much. You are too kind. But I tell Father Jim, if you put some cool stuff into this school, I'll sell it. He makes my job easy. Uh, I love bringing these kids in, showing off everything we have. It's, a, it's, it's part of the reason why I'm so passionate about my job. Uh, but this has been a lot of fun. You've been a great, a great guest who brought a very interesting perspective uh, to the podcast. So I want to give you a very special thank you for doing this with us uh, today. And for all those listening at home, we hope you're enjoying the podcast. We want to hear from you. We want to see you back at school. And all those guys that got a special shout out today, uh, you know, nothing but love for each and every one of you. This has been a great episode. And until I see all you guys very soon, Eagles on the Air brought to you straight from the Salesian High School Broadcast Studio.